Welcome to PD in your PJs. I'm Julie from Seesaw. I'm so excited to be here with you today to talk about using the drawing tool with your students in Seesaw. I'm just really honored that you would take time out of your busy work week to join us for a little bit of Seesaw training. Like I said, my name is Julie. I was a high school ELA teacher for 18 years. Now I'm on the teacher community team at Seesaw. I would love it if you're a Twitter person, if you could find me on Twitter, I'm at EdTech Julie J. If you could give me a follow, I would love it. I share lots of tips and resources related to Seesaw. And of course, you can connect with our whole team on Twitter at Seesaw. Now we're going to be talking really specifically tonight about the drawing tool. We're not talking about setting up a class in Seesaw or getting students signed into Seesaw. So if you are in need of that kind of information, make sure you watch the brand new to Seesaw trainings for your grade level. I've included a link there. So when you get these slides, later in your email the slides and the recording are coming your way in just a couple of hours when you get these slides click on that link and then um, register for one of those brand new sessions if you haven't attended it already that will give you all the setup information you need so like I said we're going to be talking about the drawing tool tonight and I'm really specifically focusing on like how students create a drawing from this screen this is a screenshot from like the web view of Seesaw it might look slightly different if you're on an iPad or a tablet I'm not actually Actually going to be talking much tonight about drawing on top of a photo we covered that a lot last week in the training called um, three new ideas for using the camera tool which is kind of a companion webinar to this one but I wanted to make sure you had access to that recording if you were interested so I um, I put that, I embedded that into these slides. So later when you open these slides, if you want to see my ideas for using the camera tool, which covers a little bit more about drawing on top of a photo, um, you can watch that training later. I mean, I, I'm not gonna play it now for you, obviously, but you would have access to that. We're mostly talking about what it's like when students are in this screen, creating a drawing, not drawing on top of a photo. Okay, so we talked about this last week, some too specific to photos, but I always wanna remind you, whether you're talking about student posts in Seesaw or even activities that you create in Seesaw, the best things you can do in Seesaw, integrate what's already going on in your classroom or what's already being used in your classroom, along with then an opportunity for students to reflect and collaborate. And just to drive home that point, I always like want to emphasize making sure your students are using the microphone. So whether your students are taking a photo or making a drawing like we're talking about tonight make sure your students have an opportunity to add some voice that's one of the great things about seesaw beyond beyond just creating something with the camera or with a drawing we would definitely want to hear their words and give them a chance to explain their thinking and to reflect so make sure your last step and anything you're asking your students to do with a drawing in seesaw is to have them record their voice i just wanted to give you that little tip I also want to reach out a little bit to those of you who might be on a Chromebook. So if you're thinking about using um, the drawing tool on an iPad, it's a little more, um, maybe it seems a little more obvious or intuitive to you. Your students, of course, can still draw even on a Chromebook. We've had a lot of trainings and you can see I've screenshot a playlist there of Chromebook specific Seesaw trainings. And I just wanted to make sure you had access to that playlist. Um, when you get the slides, click on the image here or look in the slide notes because I've included the link there too. I really wanna make sure you can see how Chromebook users are using Seesaw. And in this um, training that I've circled here, uh, Trisha, our guest presenter, talked specifically about drawing on a Chromebook and she had lots of really cool tips and ideas. She is gonna remind you that your students can use a stylus even on a Chromebook. They could use that on a trackpad and she has a couple of other great tips and tricks for you. So if you are a Chromebook, user and you wondered how exactly your students could use the drawing tool, I really recommend some of these videos and this one in particular if you need a few tips. Okay, so you know, when we're thinking about the drawing tool in Seesaw, these are about the basic directions that your students could follow to draw something and post it to their journal in Seesaw. We have uh, students, we give students a lot of opportunities to show what they know by drawing. And all you'd have to do is look really quickly in our activity library and you could see when you filtered by subject or grade that there's lots of great ideas for how students could draw in Seesaw. I just wanted to remind you though that your students could just tap the add button and get started right away with the drawing tool and then of course that last step of course would be to um, you know add some voice and to record with the microphone and they could do that with these steps anytime even if you don't start with the activity library or with an activity 
activity. So just the instructions that are pictured there on your screen, I just wanted to show you that that's the easiest, simplest way for your students to create a drawing and see them. I'm gonna show you a couple of quick examples before I get into my three tips for you. I'm gonna show you a couple of examples of what it looks like when a student shows what they know by drawing, just following these basic steps. Um, so here's an example of a math problem. So it's maybe writing more than drawing, but it's using that drawing tool in CESA. A student can show what they know by solving a math problem. You can see here they've used the label tool also to type the problem, but then the student has worked the problem here. And of course, you want to click that microphone, have the student click the microphone to explain the steps of the problem um, before they hit the green check mark to add to their journal. But what a great way to use that drawing tool to add a little voice and to hear a student explain exactly how they um, you know solved their problem here's another way students show what they know by drawing you can give students a topic or a prompt and tell them to sketch or sketch note about it again following these simple steps they're just at tapping the add button using draw tool using the microphone and then check mark this one happens to live in the activity library too and you can click this photo to get the link but you could give your students these exact instructions and they could do the same thing to sketch or draw whatever your topic is. And you can see here in this example, there's no labels, there's no emojis. It's literally just using that pen and then the drawing tool on that blank whiteboard um, to add something to Seesaw. I found this in the activity library as well by one of our contributors, Cecilia. And I thought this was a really great example of a student showing what they know using the drawing tool. So they get the instructions to draw their family and to, uh, to order them by height. So the teacher is able to see what they know if they know how to go from tallest to shortest using the drawing tool. You can see some labels here as well, but a pretty simple use of the drawing tool. You can get the activity link by clicking on this image in the slides later too. So I just wanted to show you that those are really easy, simple ways for your students to use the draw tool. And again, in the activity library, be sure to filter by grade or subject and you'll see lots of great ideas for drawing across grade levels and subject areas. Um, I love this one too. This blends the um, the drawing with the labels as well. So this, the student has used the pen tool and the label tool to label parts of this drawing. But again, just seeing what the student knows. They've gone over things about dinosaurs in their classroom. The teacher gives them the instruction to draw um, their favorite dinosaur and describe, describe some characteristics using the label tool. And of course, we could even add voice to this if we wanted to as well. So just a couple of quick examples of how students show what they know using the drawing tool. But I do want to give you some great ideas that you may not have heard of before. I actually just saw this on social media today, so I wanted to include it here for you to see as well. A good example of maybe the students have had a lesson about fixed mindset and growth mindset, so the teacher has asked them to sketch about that. It would be kind of similar to this. The topic would be growth mindset. The students make a quick sketch. It doesn't even have to be anything fancy or a complicated activity. It's just the teacher asking them to draw a sketch and post that in Seesaw. So lots of great ways for students to show what they know with drawing. Okay, here's a couple of new tricks though that you may not know and I want to tell you that a great idea that you can use with your students is to have them add emojis to a drawing so when they are doing a tr simple drawing like this or like these other ones that I've shared today you could also have students enhance those drawings by adding emojis. And so I wanted to give you a few ideas about that, but I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks too. Um, if you're a Chromebooks user, you might also be thinking that using emojis is complicated. Um, I want to remind you that there are a lot of good hacks for that on a Chromebook. Any device you're on, you kind of have to know your device's emoji keyboard or, and or how to find emojis on your device. But one great hack that Trisha shared in her Chromebooks webinar, the same one I referenced earlier, is to go to a website called Emoji Copy. And you can see I'm in the slide notes here, and I've included that link for you. Emoji Copy is a great workaround if you're a Chromebooks user and you're not exactly sure how to enable emojis on that device. You can go to this website and search for any emoji and then just copy and paste it. Here's one that I searched for to make these slides. And then you can just copy and paste it right into Seesaw. So you could have this open in a tab, um, the uh, different tab than what Seesaw is opened in. And when I click on that, it's gonna show up here. And I just copy it, 
and then I could go back to Seesaw and paste it in. In this case, I will demonstrate for you just by pasting it into my slide here. You'll see that I can copy and paste it right in. Okay, so this is a great workaround for you if your students are on a computer or Chromebook. If you don't have an emoji keyboard, just use a website like this, open it in a different tab, and your students can copy emojis. I love the idea, though, of having students enhance their drawings with emojis. And so this is an activity that's in the library. You can click on this image, or I have the link down here. But I love the idea of taking something like create a fall drawing and enhancing it a little bit with some emojis. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of other cool things about using the emojis in Seesaw 2, but let me show you a couple of examples that we've seen from our community. Here's an example of uh, Rachel Lear, uh, who goes by Science Rocks on Twitter, sh sh uh, shared or created this the other day, and I saw it on social media. Um, it's night sky and day sky, and you can see how cool this looks and how um, the student was able to really show a lot more than probably what they would have been able to feasibly draw on that screen just by adding emojis. And you can see that they probably pinched those emojis to make some of them bigger and some of them smaller. So that's why you see different size items on that particular screen. That's a great way for her to see what her students know about night sky and day sky, but they can actually add some things that they maybe couldn't draw. I thought that was a great example. And then I want to show you a trick, too, in case you don't know this. I have this open already. I kind of experimented with this before we started. So this is the same drawing screen that we've been talking about during this whole training. And I colored in to kind of look like water or waves. And I've added this fish. So I've done exactly what Rachel students did or what I did in this example. I've added the emoji here. But I want to show you a trick that you might not know. When you're using emojis in Seesaw, of course, you're starting with that label tool. So you're, the label tool is where you type words, and it's also where you type emojis. So that's where you would paste something in from emoji copy, like we were talking about. You're in the label tool if you want to use emojis. But I want to show you that you can change the size of your emojis. You can see these little dots in the corner. I can change so I can make that fish bigger. And here's the other thing I want to show you because I think this will really improve and enhance your drawings if you're using um, emojis. You can also click this style button. And it, it's referring to the style of your label. And of course, you're probably used to doing that when you're typing labels. You have all these options for style. But I like to, when I'm using emojis, choose this one that basically has no border because then I can really make that fish look like a real fish and I don't see that rectangular border around it. I think that's a great tip when you're using emoji is to click that style button and then look for the one that's basically blank with no rectangle or no border. I think that's probably what these students did. You can see they don't have a rectangle around their um, their emojis. So I think that's a really good hack and I wanted to make sure you knew about that. Now you can see that when activity contributors or creators are using emojis, oftentimes they're using a template. So the student is going to already have this and then they're going to add emojis to it or they're going to tap that label tool and add their emojis. Remember, if you are creating something like this, your template should be a JPEG or a ping file, something that is an image file, not a PDF, but a screenshot or an image file. And then your students can add emojis right on top of that. So there's not a picture of a completed one here, but picture in your brain like what it would look like if students were adding milk emoji here or an apple emoji here. That'd be a pretty cool idea. And then that trick I just showed you where you could take off the rectangle by editing the style of your label, that would be really effective in that particular assignment. Okay, here's another hack I want to show you. I think this is a really, really cool tip or trick, and it's actually not something that was top of mind for me until people in our community pointed it out. You can actually make really convenient, nice-looking dots in Seesaw if you change your pen width to the thickest setting. So picture that pen tool, and I'll show it to you in real time here in just a second. Picture the pen tool and then making it as thick or as wide as you can. And then just with a simple tap, you can actually make a dot. And we've seen a lot of our activity creators or contributors come up with this idea too. Um, I'll show you kind of what I mean here. And you can see that I'm demoing from a computer. It would look slightly different if I was on an iPad. If I click to that draw tool, I have a thick 
setting here. It looks um, a little bit more like lines if you're on an iPad. I'm on a computer, so I'm on the web version of Seesaw. If I click this dot, and I'll pick a color here, I'll pick red. If I pick the thickest setting, so regardless of what device you're on, you're in the pen tool and you're looking for the thickest setting, then all I have to do is tap and I get a really nice dot. Okay, and that works the same on iPad or on computer, but think of all the activities you could do with that dot tool. And I'm gonna show you a couple that have been contributed to our library. This one was contributed by an ambassador named Andy Leiser, and he has lots of tech hacks and I've included them in a lot of webinars recently. I like this one. He has students practicing their BR blend and he wants them to read these words out loud and tap them with the dot as they're reading them. And rather than me explaining it, I'm gonna let him explain it to you in his own words. And what you're gonna see here is that Okay, this tab. He's made a little training or recording video for his students. So he's he's making this for students to listen to, not for adults to listen to. But I think you'll get the idea and you'll get a little demo of how to change um, the pen to the thickest setting. Now, I demoed that for you in real time on the web, but Andy's students use iPads, so you'll see him demonstrate it on an iPad. I'll let him explain this activity to you. And of course, it's waiting for you in our library and the link is coming to you in these slides in your email shortly. When I finish dragging up and connecting my words, I'm going to switch to the drawing tool and I'm going to choose a color that I like best. I'm also going to touch on the three lines and adjust the line thickness to be as thick as it can be. Now I'm going to tap record. And I'm going to say each word and tap in the box next to it as I say it. Brain. Brick. Break. Broke. Braid. Broom. You can see it leaves a nice, bold circle. When I'm done recording all my words, I tap the green check in the top corner. And I tap it one more time to post. Okay, so I thought that video would be a helpful way to demonstrate how that dot tool would work. Like he said, it makes a nice bold dot and you can probably think of all kinds of activities and ways you could use that in your class. And really you just have to know the hack that it makes the dot when you change the pen to the thickest setting. And of course, in this case, mostly you're adding templates in activities for students to edit and um, draw on top of, but Here's a great example. The link is coming to you in your slides. Here's Andy's example. And then I like this one from Melody too, and this is um, counting syllables. So they're looking at each of these words and marking a dot for the number of syllables. So you'll find lots of activities that utilize this feature of putting the pen on the thickest setting to make a dot. And I bet you'll think of other ways you can use that too now that you know about that trick. Okay, here's the last thing I wanna share and then we'll have plenty of time for questions. So you're welcome to type those in the question box. Um, this is kind of a silly thing to share, but I just always have to point it out. You don't necessarily always have to have your students do their drawings in Seesaw. Have them draw or create with the materials you already have in your room and then have your students take a photo of that drawing and then record their voice with the microphone. So even though there's lots of cool ways they can draw in Seesaw, and we've of course talked about several of them tonight, there's lots of drawings they can make in Seesaw. If it's easier for you or for your students, have them draw on paper or create on paper. You have lots of materials, paint, markers, crayons, construction paper, have them use the materials in your class and then use Seesaw to save and share and preserve that. Remember, you can just follow these simple steps to have students tap the add button, take a photo of their drawing and then explain their drawing with a microphone. So you don't always have to have your students create their best drawings on the drawing screen in Seesaw. Just photograph whatever they create or draw in your class and then use Seesaw, of course, to add that little bit of voice and reflection. I think that's a great thing to emphasize in a training like this one. I wanna remind you as we're wrapping up that we have a really robust help center, help.seesaw.me. You have lots of different ways you can ask for help there and you can search for a lot of different um, topics that will help you get started with Seesaw. So don't forget that that can be your first stop if you're having trouble with anything in Seesaw or if you you need resources to get started. As we wrap up too, a survey is going to pop up on your screen and I really would love if you could give me a little bit of quick feedback. Um, that just helps us get better and know um, 
what other offerings you might be interested in. So give me a little bit of feedback on the survey when it pops up. And before we take questions, I just want to remind you that there are lots of ways you can connect with our community. We're really active on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. You probably already know that we have a Seesaw Teachers group for every grade level. So be sure to look for your grade level and join that group because the community is really generous and we'll share lots of tricks and ideas with you. And of course, our activity library, which you've heard me reference a lot of times in this webinar, that's going to have a lot of the best ideas for you if you're just getting started with Seesaw and you need your students to start um, with a couple of simple tasks. The activity library is the best place for you to go. Okay, I've been talking a long time, so I need to pop into the question box and see what might be waiting there for me. If you don't mind waiting for me to um, uh, read through all of the things you've posted in the question box, I will take a few minutes to answer these. Okay, let me see what we've got waiting for me. Okay, Joy, I'm just reading through some of your questions. In fact, what I should probably do because my question box is pretty full and I need to read through, but I should probably pause the recording so that um, anybody who's watching this later doesn't have to um, wait for me to read through the questions. The recording is coming your way soon. What I'll do is I'll stop the recording and then I'll jump right back into the question box to see um, how I can help and um, feel free to keep um, typing some things in there for me. Thanks so much for joining me. If you're watching me on YouTube, thanks for watching me there and I can't wait to see you in PD again soon.